So in this session we discuss about the unit 6 second part that is sampling gates. So what is meant by sampling gates and where we use that uh, sampling gates at the same time what are the different types of the sampling gates and what is the practical application of the sampling gate we have to discuss in this session. So simply first we have to take it as a sampling gate. So what is meant by sampling gate? So, sampling gates are known as transmission gates. So, whatever the input signal is given to the circuit, so that is whatever the input signal is given to the uh, sampling gate, it produces the output signal. So, but at which condition it produces the output signal, so that is very very important thing in the sampling gates. So, simply the sampling gate nothing but a transmission gate, at the same time a transmission circuit, so that faithfully transmit an input signal to the output. So, nothing but whatever the input signal we apply at the input side, that will be produced at the output for a finite time duration. So that is, it does nothing but the overall signal will not send to the output. So it will be sent to particular time interval only. So that is very very important thing regarding this sampling gate. So particular time interval only transmit the signal at the same time which is decided by external signal. So this uh, signal is known as gating signal or control signal. So most of the cases, so this signal is a rectangular signal only or pulse signal. So simply, so my input signal will be like this. So this is a sampling gate. So whatever the input signal. So my input signal will be a sinusoidal signal. So I want to transmit this sinusoidal signal at the output side but not continuously so it depends upon the control signal so in the sampling gate we have, we have another signal so that is control signal this control signal is a pulse signal or rectangular signal so whenever this pulse signal is given to that particular time that nothing but whenever the pulse signal is high during that time only the whatever the input signal will be reached at the output side in the remaining times the output will be so generally these sampling gates are also known as linear gates. Why? Because whatever the input signal we have to apply that will be produced at the output side. So whatever the input signal we apply so that will be produced at the output side without any distortion. So that's why these sampling gates are also known as transmission gates as well as linear gates. So simply the input appears without distortion at the output side. So that's why here but it is available for time duration t nothing but. So already I said that it depends upon the pulse with nothing but width of the pulse. Let us take it as a t. So for that time interval only it produces the output signal and the remaining times the output will be zero. So that is the condition of this trans, uh, sampling gates and where we use the sampling gates in our practical life. Simply, so that they can transmit more number of signal. The main application of sampling gates are multiplexers. So more than one signal we have to transmit by using sampling gates. So that's why they can be used at the multiplexer and D2A converter, choppers and sampling hole circuit. These are the examples of the sampling gates. Simply, so this can be uh, take it as the sampling gate is a... Uh, so transmit the signal where it, it sends more than one signal at a time also. So that's why it can be used at the, so that is uh, chopper circuits and D2A converters and multiplexers are examples of the sampling gate. And the sampling gate can be classified into two types based upon the direction of the sampling. Nothing but it can be divided into two types that is unidirectional sampling and bidirectional sampling. The first one is unidirectional sampling. So what is meant by unidirectional sampling? So the unidirectional sampling nothing but it transmit either positive part of the input signal or negative part of the input signal at the output side. Simply by using this unidirectional sampling gate we have to transmit either positive part or negative
negative part and the output side. Coming from the bidirectional gate, these gates transmit bidirectional signal. Nothing but both positive as well as negative signals will be transmitted. So using bidirectional sampling gates. So actually, so for particular time interval, whatever the time interval we have to give, and that is depends upon the control signal. The output will be a input signal. That is whatever that may be input is a sinus order signal or step signal or ram signal, whatever the input signal we produce at the output side. And remaining times the output will be zero. So that is very very important condition. And uh, here. So this uh, control line is known as enabling pulse signal or enabling signal or controlling pulse. This control signal is known as enabling pulse signal or control pulses. So what is the in our uh, so day to day life nothing but uh, before discussing the sampling gates. So in the previously we used the logic gates. And what is the difference between logic gates and sampling gates? So in the logic gates, it operates with the logical operations. Nothing but so we have to perform a logical operation here. So not like that. Whatever the input signal, it does not produce that signal. So it performs some logical operation based upon that. It produces the output signal. So that's why the the whatever the signal that is the so logic gates are non-linear gates. Why? Because so it does not produce. Whatever the input signal at the output side. So at the same time, so coming to the sampling gates, sampling gates are linear gates. So whatever the input signal that will be produced at the output side, that that's why these gates are known as linear gates. At the same time, here, so in the logical gate, logical uh, logic gate, it performs a logical operation. In the sampling gate, they can't perform any logical operation. Just it transmit the signal at the output side. So without any distortion, with a time control signal. And in logic circuit or logical gate, logic uh, logical gates, so we don't use any control signal. But coming to the sampling gate, we go, we use a control signal for controlling the output condition. And uh, here the minimum number of inputs for logic gate is two, except the NOT gate. So except the NOT gate, the minimum number of outputs will be two. Inputs will be two. That is and or not maybe anything. So it contains two inputs. That is the minimum inputs required. Coming for the logical gate, the minimum number of inputs will be only one. So that is about the sampling gate. And what is the difference between this sampling gate and logical gate? And the next one is uh, so simply this is the sampling gate. Here my input signal will be a. A square wave signal, and here the time interval is minus v1. That is during this gate pulse only it produces the output signal. Nothing but in this time only the output will be produced, and the remaining times the output will be z. So simply in this particular time interval only. Nothing but in this part time interval only the output will be so input signal. In the remaining times the output will be a zero. So this is about the sampling gate. And what is the application? I am nothing but applications of the sampling gate. And let us discuss about the what is the principle of the sampling gate. So simply with a uh, switch connection, we have to so we have to examine the so what is the principle of the sampling gate. So maybe the switch will be connected in the series manner or in the parallel manner. So when in this type of circuit, that is, in this type of circuit, that is, the switch is connected in the series manner, and the output is taken across with a resistor R. So, in this type of circuit, whenever the switch is on, that is, when the switch is turned on, so during that time only, whatever the input signal will be produced at the output side. That is. So when the switch is in on condition during that time only the input signal V not is equal to V S and the remaining time the output will be zero. So like that this switch can be acts as a control signal here. So based upon the switch operation we have to decide the output condition. That's why this switch can be acts as a control line or control switch here. And the next one is uh, so coming to the parallel connection. So here the input when the switch is closed during that time the output will be zero. Why? Because the parallel connection the uh, the voltage across short circuit will be zero. 
So for this particular condition, switch is closed. In switch is closed condition during that time only the output will be whatever the input that can be produced at the output side. But here, what is the uh, and the switch opens, the output will be zero. Here, when the switch is open, so that is V naught is equal to. When the switch is open, the V naught is equal to. So whatever the input signal we have, that can be produced at the output side. That is V naught is equal to V s. And when the switch is closed, then the V naught is equal to zero. So that is a difference between these two things. So we have to connect the sampling uh, gate like this or like this. So that is our choice. We have to connect in this two manner. So this is about the basic principle of the sampling gate. And the next one is a uh, unidirectional sampling gate. So as we know that the sampling gates can be divided into two types that is based upon the output signal. That is either unidirectional sampling gates or bidirectional sampling gates. The first one is unidirectional sampling gate. So nothing but the unidirectional sampling gate, the output is uh, so only either a positive part of the input signal or negative part of the input signal. Here, so here this uh, is the circuit diagram for the unidirectional sampling gate. So this is a positive pulse signal, nothing but here the output is a positive going pulse only. So the first case is we assume that, so here we apply a gating signal or control signals to the diode anode terminal as well as the input signal is applied to the diode anode terminal through capacitor. So at the same time let us uh, assume like that. We assume that one case one that is uh, my input signal that is a V input is equal to 10 volts. So the input signal V input is equal to 10 volts. So and so here we assume that whenever the uh, diode is in on condition during that time only whatever the signal it will be produced at the output side and the remaining time the output will be zero. So first we assume that the input signal will be 10 volts and it depends upon the gating signal and the gating signal we assume that the minus V1 level will be minus the first condition the minus V1 level is equal to 20 volts that is minus 20 volts and minus V2 will be minus 10 volts. So simply the waveform will be like this minus 20 volts and minus 10 volts. So what is the output condition here? Simply we say that so this signal is applied to the terminal here that is X at the same time this input signal is also reached here. So that is a minus V2 that is minus 10 plus 10 that is 0 volts. So the 0 volts is applied to the diode D. It, it, it is conducted or not? Here the diode is not conducted. So that's why the output signal will be simply 0. So simply the output can be represented with like this that is the output will be 0 volts. So for the next condition the input will be same that is 10 volt signal. So we assume that the minus V1 is again 20 volts. Minus V1 is equal to minus 20 volts and minus V2 is equal to 0 volts. Let us assume like that. Or first we assume that one is minus 5 volts signal. So during that time only, so here the minus V2 signal will be reached here that is minus 5 volts and the input signal whatever we have applied here that is 10 volts. So minus 5 and plus 10 that is a 5 volts. So this part of that is some part of the input signal will be reached at the output side. Simply it can be like this. Minus 20, minus 10 and this will be 5 volts. So above this condition only 5 volt signal will be reached at the output side.
and the next one is next condition minus v1 signal will be minus 20 volts and we assume that is uh, 0 volts so that's uh, in this condition 0 plus 10 volts simply we say that whatever the input voltage applied here so that will be produced at the output side so this 10 volt signal will be reached at the output side without any distortion or without any clipping so we produce the output signal so that is the condition here and the last condition we assume that minus v1 signal is minus 20 volts and v2 will be 5 volts plus 5 volts so in this time so the gating signal that is 5 volts and the input signal will be combined and the signal will be 15 volts so in this time the diode is in on condition when the diode is in on condition these 15 volts that is the 15 volt signal will be reached at the output side but so whatever the input signal we have the maximum voltage of the input signal will be 10 volts only but here the output signal is more than the input signal that is a V0 is greater than the VI signal at this particular case so that is a problem in this type of the sampling gate why because so it is combined with the control signal so this causes the pedestal so this is combined with the control signal so this causes the pedestal what is meant by pedestal simply we say that the pedestal is a difference between the output signal during time period and that uh, so time period through the input signal nothing but here over the excess 5 volts is known as pedestal so that is a major problem of this type of the unidirectional sampling gates so the major drawback of this particular type of unidirectional sampling gate is simply we say that so it can be combined with the input as well as control signal so here the input signal as well as control signal will be combined with each other so that is the problem of the unidirectional sampling gate and this is unidirectional sampling gate which transmit the positive part of the input signal for negative part of the input signal transmission simply the diode direction will be changed simply we transmit the negative part of the input signal so that is the condition of the unidirectional sampling gate so that unidirectional sampling gate is also used for transmission of more than one input here we have to transmit only single input but by using unidirection transmission gate we have to transmit more than one input how we have to transmit this type of signal so this is diode d1 and this is diode d2 Here I am using a capacitors. So this is take it as C1 and C2. And this one is a VS1 and VS2. And here there is a control signal for each one. And this one and here also both having single control signal that is the control signal and at the same time the output is taken the combination of these two things and the output is taken across here that is V0 or this diagram can be modified like this so here the input the control signal will be applied to both diodes and the input signal will be different so this can be also uh, draw like this so all uh, the modified circuit diagram for this particular one is simply first I am giving VS1 to single diode and VS2 to another diode that is VS1 and VS2 to D1 and D2 after that time so they can be combined and given to the capacitor The control signal is applied here and here I am connecting an extra diode that is the D3 I am taking it as a D3 and here the resistor is connected and this one will be the output. Simply this circuit can be replaced like this also. 
So here by using this circuit we, uh, we have to so examine the what is the different output conditions we have to obtain by using this condition. So first I am explaining like that uh, that is uh, if consisting of two diodes we have to take it as a diode D1 and D2 and this signal will be so whatever the signal we have to apply here so that is uh, we have to take it as uh, AB. So R we have to take it as AB when the input signal R uh, here the A and B will be 0. So simply we say that that is uh, this will be A. So when during that time here A and B and the control signal will be uh, actually this is more uh, that is uh, obviously we have to take it as a 0 volts only. So in this particular time we have to take it as a 0 volts. So first I am applying A and B and during that time both are 0, 0. What is the condition of diode D1 and D2? So that is the input signal D1 and D2. So the control signals whatever we apply here. So AB that is 0, 0. The diode D1 is off condition and diode D2 is also off condition. So when these two conditions will be in off condition that is D1 is off and D2 is off. So whatever the input signal it can't be reached at the output side. Why? Because it can be replaced with the open switch. So at the same time the output is simply we have to say that the V0 is equal to 0 volts. Next so that is another signal that is 0 1 signal. So that is during that time we apply a control signal to the diode D1 that is 0 and diode D2 that is 1. Simply the diode D2 will be on condition and D1 is going to off condition. That is off on so in this time the output is simply Vs2. Why? Because diode D2 is in on condition. Whatever the input voltage we have to apply at the diode D2 that can be produced at the output side. Simply we have to take it as Vs2. And the third condition 1 0 condition. So in the 1 0 condition. So first we have to take it as diode D1 is on condition. And diode D2 will be off condition. That is on of during that time the output will be Vs1. Why? Because diode D1 is in on condition that's why the output will be Vs1. The last condition we have to take it as the both will be 1 1. So in this time the diode D1 is on and diode D2 is also on condition. So simply whatever the input signal at diode D1 that is V1 is reached here and diode D2 is also reached here. Simply the output will be Vs1 plus Vs2. So it produces the combination of uh, these two thing, uh, signals. So that is about the unidirectional sampling gate which generates more than one signal at the output side. So simply we say that what is the advantages of this type of unidirectional sampling gates. So the circuit will be very simple. So why? Because uh, here we use a simple diodes and at the same time so here uh, the designing point of view also that is very simple and the time delay is more. Sorry, the time delay is very less. So whenever the control signal we have to apply that will be produced at the output side and these gates can be easily extended. We have to extend this type of gates very easily. So we have to connect more than one input signal. So that's why we have to, uh, we have to extend this type of uh, gates very easily. And it having some disadvantages. What are the disadvantages of these things will be? It only allows single direction. So maybe it allows the positive direction or it allows the negative direction. So that is at the same time the input signal will be combined with the control signal. Already we said that in the unidirectional sampling gate, the last condition, the input signal will be coincide with the control line. So that is the problem of this particular unidirectional sampling gate. That is the major problem of the unidirectional sampling gate. And uh, the gates is limited use. Why? Because so here the gauge voltage at the diode. So simply we say that here the limitations will be very less. So maybe we have to transmit two or three output signals at a time. Uh, more than that signal it produces the, so it does not produce the correct output. So that is the problem of this 
you need directional sampling gates. So this can be avoided by using bidirectional sampling gates. So a bidirectional sampling gate can be designed with the diodes as well as transistors. So in the next class, we discuss about the bidirectional sampling gates using diodes as well as transistors. Thank you.